because of Vasco de Gama had discovered India in 1498. So Portuguese claimed their right that uh, they will come to India for trade. So there was Portuguese East India Company, then came the Dutch, there was Dutch East India Company and then came the French. It was French East India Company and finally came Britishers. In 1600, they came to India, 1600 AD, they came to India and uh, for the purpose of trade because this was the only motive for which uh, in the court of Jagir, uh, Sir Thomas Rowe seek the permission and trade began to look after trade. A company which is known as the East India Company was appointed to look after the trade operations in the country. In 1757, in 1757 AD, East India Company was appointed as a trading company to India and it set up its two offices in the country, Board of Directors and the Board of Control. Board of Directors and Board of Control. These two offices belong to the East India Company. The officials came to the country and they saw the riches in Bengal, they saw richness in the part of different parts of Punjab, it was a large uh, territory at that time, Bengal large territory because East Bengal and West Bengal were same at that time, so a large territory was there and in different parts of India, a very proper system of uh, uh, agrarian policy, a very proper system of growing different types of crops was going on, correct? So when the East India Company was set up in India with a view to look after Indian trade, to look after in India British trade, gradually they came to know that India has lots of opportunities. And actually at that time, although economically India was very well versed, economically there was no problem in the country. But if we see the society of that time, if we see the culture of that time, it was not up to the mark actually. There were different social groups, there were uh, different social norms, stereotypes and uh, uh, traditions, there were stereotypes, means old traditions were continuing whether they were good or not. Different social evils were going on, Satya system, Parda system, female infanticide, polygamy, uh, etc, etc. They all were prevalent in the country. Education was nominal, people used to go, the Hindu uh, children used to go to the Patshalas, Patshalas to get the education of Sanskrit and other languages and Muslim children used to go to Madarsas. So there was this system and hardly education was popular among the people. So there were social evils, there were stereotypes, there were superstitions, myths etc on different things. So gradually the officials of the company, they came to know about it. They came to know that although India is uh, known to be a golden sparrow because of its richness, but actually from inside uh, we can take advantage of it. And the officials of the East India Company, they began to derive lots of money from India. And when one official of the East India Company used to retire from India or used to go um, to his own country, England, from India, he was very rich and uh, lots of money in the money plus other forms of money like gold, etc. They used to get it in bribe, they used to tell the people of India that they were going, they are going to be their masters and uh, you know, the people of India at that time, they were not aware about anything, they were not aware about colonialism, they were not aware that any country could capture them. So they were just working as the directions were given by the officials of the company. And I told you that when, when one official used to go back to England, he was sometimes richer than the British crown, Queen Victoria, richer than the British crown. You know, how could the government of England tolerate it? That the richness of India, the benefit is going to the officials of the company. Correct? So, from 1757 till 1857, can you see it? 
100 years for 100 years long period of time uh, they uh, just uh, not only looking after trade in india but just ruling over india okay and they targeted the uh, particular uh, first area that was bengal where zamindars of bengal were very very powerful zamindars the owners of the lands the owners of big pieces of land in bengal they were very very powerful they were shifting towards the rajmahal hills noted down these are all your map works in the map just uh, uh, take this bengal and it will be uh, uh, it can be asked in board examination you get a map work uh, in the map of india obviously uh, first of all do practice in the on the physical on the political map and then do it on the physical map because any of the map can come in board so the zamindars of, uh, of bengal they began to shift to the rajmahal hills and in the rajmahal hills there lived two categories of people the paharis and the santhals about which we will study in this chapter uh, in the preceding chapter the paharis and the santhals one mark question then they shifted to the west of the deccan the deccan part of india the uh, southern part of india they were uh, to the west western part uh, say uh, modern uh, mumbai uh, that is maharashtra mumbai the capital uh, uh, the trading capital the economic capital of india and then karnataka uh, kerala all these things. the so west of the deccan they were shifting over there and uh, there was east india company it was in the officials of the company were interfering in the matters of the countryside they were minutely watching the granaries, the different types of crops that were grown by the people under the zamindars. There were so many different categories of peasants and the main concern of these uh, zamindars and the officials of the company were connected with the revenues. And even the peasants, particularly the poor peasants, uh, they were also concerned with the revenues because I told you that although East India Company was brought to India as a trading company, but gradually they began to interfere in the internal matters of the Indians and particularly they targeted the countryside. So the problem of revenue was there before the peasants. Uh, the revenue policy that they adopted was obviously to derive more and more money from the country so that uh, they could be rich. And there was a big gap between the people of India, between rich and poor. Because of the wrong policies of the East India Company, rich became richer day by day and poor became poorer day by day. So the officials of the company, they began to think that how they could control the countryside. Because I told you that uh, India was the land of villages. Even today it is famous as land of villages, but previously mostly villages were there. Uh, you know, you have read in your class 10th that most of the big towns, most of the developments in the urban areas that were obviously they were done after 1857 when revolt was there and the company uh, was abolished from India and the British Queen Victoria also she was proclaimed as the Queen of India. Then all these developments took place. So mostly they were countryside by this time and East India Company was targeting towards the countryside. Correct? When all this was going on, and East India Company began to interfere in the internal matters of the Indians. Indians, I told you that they were myths, they were superstitions at that time. They thought that after 100 years they will go. Because revenue, I told you, people were concerned that they had to pay revenue. And in the preceding chapter, we will discuss that how they introduced different land systems. The company, uh, the, company the officials of the East India Company, they introduced the, in their own way. The different systems of land distribution, auction of land, etc., etc. If not, if revenue is not paid, how they put the land on into auction and how even zamindars later on they turned against them. We will read it in, uh, in the preceding chapter. However, let me end this by telling you that uh, Indians, you know, they uh, realized that in 1757 actually they came and they were established in the country. So anything, whatever things came up, uh, they have life not more than 100 years. That after 100 years, they will automatically end. And you know, in the next chapter, we will study about the revolt of 1857 without preparation. 
there was a revolt in 1857 after 100 years and what British government wanted, they wanted the same. Because I told you that when East India Company's officials were becoming rich and they were uh, accepting bribes in India, taking lots of money in different forms, there was drain of wealth, lots of drain of wealth from India to Britain. Uh, then the uh, government realized, the British government and company and government totally different from each other, you must have realized by now. So uh, the, when there was a revolt and the revolt failed, Indians were defeated badly. But uh, Queen Victoria and her officials, they got an excuse that East India Company, it was guilty of the revolt because of uh, your uh, uh, activities in India. There was a revolt and it has uh, really it has defamed us and uh, our image before the European countries have been faded. So immediately after 1857, that is in 1858, Queen Victoria was also proclaimed as a Queen of India and India became a colony of Britishers. Understand the difference between the two that Britishers came. They came to India in 1600. In 1757, East India Company was established. 1600, they came up gradually defeated Dutch, French and Portuguese and Portuguese were limited to certain areas of India. 1757 East India Company and 1857 there was a revolt and they were outset from India and direct rule of the Britishers started with the colonialism. Okay student, so go through this lecture, prepare your notes and we will discuss further what were the actions, what were the policies of the officials of the East India Company during this period in India. Thank you very much.